Welcome back to Huchos. Today on Huchos, we'll be unboxing, reviewing, and part testing this. This is the Medic Grow Slim Power 2 Full Spectrum Greenhouse Supplemental Grow Light. All right, straight up, discreet packaging, fantastic. In the box, we've got a power cord and some hanging chain, so that'll help us hang the light, and the light itself. Let's get it out. This is gonna be a chunky boy. Oh my God. So I actually had to build an entirely new test platform for this light, and I'm glad I did. This is, this is a behemoth of a light. Whoa, it's heavy. Look, look at that. The density of diodes on this thing is just incredible. So let's get to discussing the features of this light. This is the Medic Grow Slim Power 2 commercial greenhouse LED grow light. It's a 550 watt full spectrum grow light that is specifically made for greenhouse growers. And there are a few key features that this light brings to the table to make it ideal for greenhouse growing. The light has purposefully been made very slim to cast a very small shadow when it is hung above plants within a greenhouse environment for supplemental lighting. You can see that the design actually packs in 2,300 pieces of white and Osram red LED diodes across the PCB, which is passively cooled by a heat sink that is made out of a single piece of aluminium. This heat sink is actually manufactured in such a way that the fins are shaved off the single piece of aluminium that allows the heat to dissipate evenly throughout the aluminium from the thermal paste that comes off the back of the PCB that sports the diodes. It requires 550 watts of power and is designed to replace a 1000 watt HPS globe. The light is also IP67 rated, so it is fully waterproof so that you can hang it in environments such as a greenhouse. The light is daisy chainable and easily connects from one fixture to the next up to 140 units and can be controlled with the TS2 light controller. The efficacy for this light is claimed to be 2.8 and the footprint is 6.5 foot by four foot. And obviously I didn't have a test bed that was this size. So I've had to create a new test bed, which I've been meaning to do for a while that would accommodate such a large light. So let's get to testing the light and seeing if it lives up to the efficacy claims. Okay, so I'm just gonna throw some tape on the driver and it's gonna be really hard to find a place to tape the finned heat sink, but might just sneak a bit in the side there. And we can let that heat up while I'm testing it. And now we can have a look at the temperature on the light. So I'll start with the driver. The driver is running at 30.5 degrees Celsius, which is 86.9 degrees Fahrenheit. A heat sink, 37 degrees Celsius and 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. The side of our driver, 28.9 degrees Celsius and 84 degrees Fahrenheit. So the driver is running extremely cool and the heat sink fans are definitely doing their job and passively cooling the PCB of this light. This is a really powerful light. I can just feel the heat coming off the front of this light. So I'm gonna take these power results and figure out an efficacy for the light at 12 inches plus one for the power sensor. Okay, so I've done the calculations and 
it's pretty impressive to be honest. So obviously this light is designed to actually be hung in a greenhouse scenario without reflective walls and all that. However, that's just how lights are tested. So we've got the reflective walls in here and I hung it at 13 inches, one inch for the height of the PAR sensor. And we got this result here. Obviously it's hot through the center, but when these lights are hung next to each other in rows, which is what this cabling allows for on each end, the light will actually dissipate over the top of the canopy because it's meant to be hung at a minimum of 37 inches and ranging onwards from there. So those high numbers that you're seeing in this palm map aren't actually indicative of how it would be used in real life. So if we average all the numbers in that palm map, we get an average PPF of 585. We then divide that by the watt draw, which was 546 watts from the wall, and we times it by the area that we're measuring. So the area here is 2.4 square meters. So we times it by 2.4, and we get an efficacy of 2.57 micromoles per joule. Now that is a fantastic efficacy. This is a really nicely designed light. It's obviously not going to be for everyone, but it is just a beast of a light. And I hope I get some more lights like this in the future because I'd love to kit out a greenhouse with lights similar to this to give that supplemental lighting throughout the winter that I've been missing with my tomatoes. Now, obviously this isn't gonna be cost effective to everyone because we're not all running commercial grows. It'd just be really interesting to see the difference between supplemental lighting versus non-supplemental lighting in a greenhouse environment, maybe not during our summer, but definitely during our winter. So thank you to Medigrow for sending me out this light to review. It's a really nice unit and happy hydroponicking. I'll see you next time on Who Chose. It's like a sun, a bar of sun. <laughs> it's really cool.